It's so easy to get lost in the fog of life. Tragedy hunts us all, and any event that causes suffering will linger longer than it should if you let it, because our sad stories enable us to grade ourselves on a forgiving curve. They give us latitude and justification to stay lazy, weak-minded mother And the longer it takes for us to process that pain, the harder it is to reclaim our lives. Sometimes, weakness and laziness are rooted in hate and anger. And until we receive the confession, apology, or compensation, we believe we are owed. We stay stuck in our sh- as a form of self-righteous rebellion against our tormentors or even against life itself. Some of us become entitled. We think our pain entitles us to feel sorry for ourselves or that we are entitled to good fortune because we've survived hell. Of course, feeling entitled doesn't make it so. Understand, the clock is always ticking and at some point, your golden hour will expire unless you take action. People who get lost in their past, the ones who bore their friends and family with the same tragic story over and over without showing a hint of progress remind me of a skydiver who becomes too fixated on their tangled parachute they know they have a backup ready to go but burn so much time trying to fix the primary chute that they forget to track their altimeter and by the time they cut the first chute away and pull the second rip cord it's too late part of the problem is that they have become terrified of pulling that second cord because if it's also fucked up then they truly will be helpless that is a mental trap set by fear we cannot afford to remain afraid of cutting away dead weight to save ourselves i was that skydiver for far too long my father was violent my mom was broken i was bullied laughed at and misunderstood check check and checkmate and yet I was breathing free and I was not bleeding. Physically, I was alive and well and perfectly capable of cutting all of that bullshit away. I'd wasted way too much of my life telling myself the same sad story. I needed to move forward. It was time to write something new. If an act of God or nature tore your life apart, the good news is that you really have nobody to blame. Yet, the randomness of it all can feel so personal as if you've been marked for doom by the fates. If you feel wronged by somebody else, you may be waiting on a confession or an apology in order to move forward, but I'm sorry to say the apology, that tearful confession you've been dreaming of will never come. The good news is, you don't need anybody else to free you from your trauma. You can do it on your own. My father never apologized to me. Nobody ever said sorry for anything I went through. I had to come to the conclusion that while I didn't deserve any of it, I was my main problem and primary obstacle. I'd given Trunus Goggins all of my power. I had to take it back. I had to defuse my demon. I had to shrink him down to the lowly pathetic figure he was by humanizing him just as there was no other way to come out of the gauntlet that was my childhood except fucked up i had to see that he was a mortally fucked up piece of shit because of what he went through once i understood that it was up to me to either do the hard work to break that cycle or stay cursed like medics on the scene of a car accident we all must act with a sense of urgency and tune into that ticking clock in the back of our minds because there is a drop dead time on everything we do in life all our dreams and visions come with expiration dates etched in invisible ink windows of opportunity can and do close so it is imperative that we do not waste time on bullshit none of us have any clue what's coming for us or when our time might run out which is why I do my best to ignore anything that is counterproductive. I'm not suggesting we act like robots, but we need to understand that forward motion gives our lives momentum. We need to remember that sometimes chaos will descend 
and a clear highway can be wiped out by a flash flood in the blink of an eye. When that happens, a lot of mother look for a cozy place to hunker down and hide out until the storm passes. I'm only human, they say, when holy hell rains down upon them and they feel drained and powerless. They cannot conceive of a way to keep going. I understand that impulse, but if I had succumbed to the I'm only human mentality, I never would have dug myself out of the deep hole I was in at 24 years old. Because the second you utter those words, the white towel is fluttering in the air and your mind stops looking for more fuel. I didn't know for sure if I'd ever find my way out of the darkness. I just knew that I could not throw in the towel and neither can you because there is no towel in our corner. There is only water and a cut man. And if those are your only options, you have no choice but to keep fighting until you overcome every last thing that once held you the f- back. You have been preoccupied by bullshit for way too long. It's time to switch your focus to the things that will slingshot you forward. Mediocrity is everywhere right now. And we're all trying to find an easy way out. And we're judging ourselves. Let's say there's 10 people in this room and we're all mediocre. But I'm the best of the mediocre people. I now think I'm great. I'm great. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great. They tell us what we want to hear. The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling. That challenge and feeling that of, of that person who's waking up at 3.30 in the morning and saying, hey, put your shit on, we're going for a run. We don't like that challenge. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man, I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. We'll take a day off, man. We'll get a pizza and shit. watch the game. We like that. We we love that feeling. Why? Because you understand, man, we're good, bro. We don't want that it's like this. Hey, man, no, bro. Get your shit on, man. <laughs> Stop being a punk. We don't want that in our lives. We don't want that person who's constantly challenging our weaknesses. We want that person who's constantly, you know, making us feel nice and good and secure in ours. That's the mediocrity of life. We want to be the best amongst the average people. People wonder, how do you stay hungry all the time? Because after I accomplish something, I don't sit back like a lot of guys who graduate buds, graduate this, graduate that. They get comfortable. They wonder why I'm getting weak, man. I don't know. I lost my edge. What's going on? Because once you hit the top of the mountain, guess what happened? I'm good. I'm good. So you wonder why you're falling down now. Because once you reach the top of the mountain, you got to build another one. That's mediocrity. There's a lot of people in mediocrity who have a nice resume, but they're one timers, man. They hit, they hit a one time deal. They busted it open, got a lot of money, but they're good. You're mediocre now, man. What are you doing today, tomorrow, the next day? That's why I'm listening to theorists. I don't listen to all that bullshit. I listen to who's like this, man. What's wrong, man? I'm tired, dude. Why are you tired? Because tomorrow, I gotta do the shit again, man. Whatever the shit is that made me nauseous and sick to my stomach, it made me hurt. There's no ending. And that's the person I listen to. That's the person who's gained knowledge. You gain knowledge through suffering. And on the other end of suffering is a world that very few, very few have ever seen. It's a beautiful world because that's where you find yourself. You don't find yourself in over here. You find yourself on the other end. Like, like the 100 mile race I was on, I ran it for 24 hours. I found myself on the other end of that race. That 19 hours, I found, wow, there's a whole nother world out here that I've never even saw. But the world's in your mind. And that's what all that mediocrity is about. Mediocrity is contagious. Knowledge has to be improved challenged and increased constantly or it vanishes just like knowledge you can't take self-discipline for granted unfortunately being a self-disciplined person isn't a one and done kind of thing once you have learned how to live that way you can still lose it if you don't consistently strengthen it by setting new challenges and rejecting instant gratification in favor of bigger future reward. Never assume that you're disciplined enough. There's always a new area in which you can improve your self-control.